God, we would like to bless you and thank you for giving us opportunity to uh, serve you in this way. And we thank you for involving us and making us partakers of your mission and ministry. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this vision, this purpose of reaching out to people in so many ways. And we thank you for the work of GTC and Enkenza Blaze, the way that they've touched so many people. And now, Lord, we ask you to be present with us, even as we seek to further be able to reach out to your people in the diocese of Aksa. Lord, we thank you for the people who are here, and we thank you for those who have been with us and those who are still going to be with us. Lord, give us the vision not to stray away from your vision and from your purpose. Help us to see the cross and see what you see and hear what you say. Continue to guide us even as you are with us. By your Holy Spirit, anoint every thought and mind expressed at this meeting. Help us, Lord, to know and understand your call and understand that you first and foremost died for us and made us members of your body. And Lord, now you are calling us into the world to do the mission that you that is only yours. And we thank you for the people who served you at the board level in the past. And we thank you for these 15 years of mission and ministry of GTC. And we thank you for Trevor, who has been director ever since, the director ever since. And we thank you for people, all the people who served at the board in the past and presently. And we ask you, Lord, to bless them, even as we seek to provide leadership in this stage. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Just wish to say that um, um, we, the purpose of this meeting is mainly uh, talking about the transitioning GTC into our diocese. And I'm not sure, I'm sure you will my letter to you in December, in which I advise the above matter uh, is a major goal for the 2021, in other words, the transitioning. And we have been talking with the um, the uh, coordinate, GTC coordinators, as well as we have these conversations at the Synod of Bishops, at the uh, PSC and Provincial Synods. And um, we know also that uh, it has been um, accepted, um, this, this, this move towards the diocese. And in particular, we need to be, this, at this meeting, we need to be talking about basically three things, uh, which um, uh, are the roles and responsibilities and key objectives, strategies of the GTC gas and coordinators and the implementation teams and the core teams. And also perhaps see how people struggle or how people find it easy or we are here together and are acknowledging that um, even though we believe that God has given its uh, GTC this mission and ministry, but we also know that we are co-workers in the work of God in the diocese, uh, seeking to achieve the same thing. And also we would like to uh, talk about the faculties in the diocese and uh, seek the current needs of the dioceses. And uh, maybe you can share with us how we can help or how we can be of help to help um, uh, develop those uh, teams as well as provide material and training for people who might be uh, feel called to this ministry. And of course, a thirdly would be the preparation for Anglicans Ablaze 2021. And we have real exciting news in this regard. 
we are intending to invite the whole Elgin communion to participate um, in what would mean that please don't miss the meetings. We don't want your orders to miss out. Um, in fact, I'm sure you may have received the advert already that has been sent out. And I'm encouraging you to invite all people at a, at, uh, to be part of the uh, Anglicans of Blaze 2021. And at this stage, I think I will give Trevor uh, to lead and guide us more further uh, into what we um, and elaborate on the things that we have already have already pointed out. Uh, he will speak in details with those. Trevor, over to you. Thank you, Bishop Sietzi, and good afternoon, everyone. Maybe um, if I can interrupt a bit. Um, the introduction, I thought that it would be Manta and Bebe only. At least, Glenis, you'd understand that we have already met with you just before we start. And we accept that you, you, you are welcome and uh, we know something of you and something of your concern in your diocese. And uh, Mandla, unfortunately, we can't hear you and uh, hope you are hearing us. God bless you. Thank you for your yes. yes. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop Sietzi. So I'm going to dive straight into it. Uh, Bishop Sietzi said there were three or four things. I'm going to spell these out. Um, four steps. Number one, I want to speak about transitioning GTC into our dioceses. This is really important because um, whilst GTC has, has, has become quite a strong organization, it needs to be a lot closer to the people. And in fact, it needs to be residing inside the diocese. And uh, we've had uh, discussions with the bishops, uh, Bishop Martin and Bishop Sietzi and the Synod of Bishop. We've had discussions at PSC, at um, Provincial Synod. There have been motions and uh, everyone has agreed that this needs to happen. So our big goal for 2021 is to say, let's make the transitioning process into the dioceses happen. Now, that's the first thing. The goal is transitioning GTC into the dioceses. The second thing is, if we transition into the diocese, you in the dioceses, you need to have a team to be able to receive such transitioning. Now, most dioceses has a um, GTC coordinator, but the coordinator can't do this alone. Um, all of our, most of our coordinators are clergy, and there are others like Linus here this afternoon, um, who, who ha work, have secular employed employment. And so um, you can't do this by yourself. You need to have a team. And we call that team the core team or the executive team. It's a few people of a, about six people, five, six people around the coordinator. And that is really important. So bishops, uh, we believe that it's essential, especially that you be involved uh, in making sure that at least there is a core team and perhaps you want to work together with the, the, your GTC coordinator to see that core team come into being good people, trusted people, people who are movers and shakers, enthusiastic and so on. And then once the core team is in place, the core team helps the coordinator. They work together to form an implementation team. Now, an implementation team is a lot bigger. And so what does it look like? Essentially, the implementation team consists of the core team and a number of others. We want to, uh, for example, suggest a team of 
20, it could be 20. What would a team of 20 look like? Well, it would look like it, it, it would consist of five clergy, five adults, five young adults, and five young people. That would be an implementation team of 20, and then you have the coordinator uh, who is the 21st person. If you have an implementation team of seven each, so seven young people, seven young adults, seven adults, and seven clergy, you will have a, an implementation team of 28 people, 29 with your coordinator. And um, how you configure that is really up to you. Who serves there is really up to you. But you need good people who can further the work of growing the church in the diocese. The implementation team, the coordinator, the core team, the implementation team, the full team, in other words, they all work under the authority of the local bishop. First and foremost, you're under the authority of your bishop. That is really important. Um, so let me just um, recap uh, for a moment. Let me recap what I've just said. First of all, the big goal for this year, all the bishops and PSC and provincial synod, they have all agreed that GTC needs to be transitioned into the dioceses. That is the closest to the people, and that would be right. Secondly, an implementation team needs to be formed. First, about five or six or seven people around the coordinator, that's like an executive team, the core team, and then some more. And we said, either five youth, five young adults, five adults, and five clergy, or if you want a bigger team, seven young people, seven young adults, seven adults, and seven clergy. That makes 28 people, and together with the coordinator, that would be 29. Let me give you one or two examples of how this uh, looks in various dioceses. In Natal, they have 10 archdeaconries. They have been twinned two by two, and each has two coordinators in such an archdeaconry. And they organize mission and ministry. And they form part of the core team, and they report uh, to Bruce, who is the coordinator. Um, in the Diocese of uh, St. Mark, formerly Bishop uh, Martin was there, now it's Bishop Luke, and they have made growing the church part of the core ministry of their diocese. And so they have representatives serving among the young people, the children, um, the adults, the clergy, and so on. In, um, in the Diocese of um, Saldana Bay, where Bishop Raphael is, uh, there they have decided to, um, that every uh, uh, parish ought to have one or two reps. Every archdeaconry needs to have a rep. And that archdeaconry coordinator works with the people in the parishes in their archdeaconry. And then those archdeaconry reps report or they form part of the core team of Saldana Bay. How you organize that is up to you. You need to do what is best for your diocese. And the implementation team together with the coordinator serves under the authority of the bishop. Our job is to serve all of you. We are your servants and we come with um, resources, advice, counsel, 
Uh, we sometimes run programs or we help you to run programs. We have trained loads of people uh, to be able to assist in dioceses, but we want to train your people to be able to work within your dioceses. That is first prize, ultimately. So transitioning into the dioceses, forming an implementation team, first the coordinator, then a core group, then the full implementation team. Thirdly, this afternoon is about asking you, what are the needs of your diocese? In other words, how best can we serve you? Would you like us to train up some implementers for you? We can train our people that work with children. We can train our people who work with youth. We can uh, train our people that will uh, um, train others in discipleship or in leadership and so on and so forth. We, all, we even have uh, 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 trainers training others with regard to things like GBV, which is one of the scourges in this country. We would love to train your trainers. So what are your needs? You need to let us know. We don't want to impose anything on anybody. You need to let us know. You need to be in contact with us and tell us what your needs are. So that's the third thing. So um, uh, an example is, uh, if you look at the uh, information that we sent you, and you will recall that we sent you a faculty list, and that faculty list will indicate the areas in which we are working, mission, evangelism, church planting, discipleship and disciple making, um, ch child development and resourcing, youth development and resourcing, leadership development and resourcing, spiritual formation, prayer and intercession, and then clergy support, and resourcing. And finally, AA 2021 online conferencing. How can we help you? And if you look on that faculty list, you will see that number three on the faculty list has to do with ministry to children, parents, and Sunday school teachers. How can we help you in that area? For example, our job is to serve but we need to know what your needs are so that we can serve you in accordance with your needs. And lastly, number four, I'd like to speak about preparations for Anglicans Ablaze 2021. And we have some really exciting news in this regard. Now, you will recall that Anglicans Ablaze has always been international. In other words, we've had not only local speakers, but international speakers. We didn't only have local attendees, you know, people from all around AXA, but we also had people come from Australia and Singapore and Malaysia and the UK and the USA and different countries in Africa and so on. But this time around, <coughs> pardon me, we would like to make it truly international. So how are we going to go about that? Well, you will remember that at Anglicans Ablaze 2018, we had Archbishop Moon Hing speak there. And uh, after he had spoken uh, during one of the breaks, he was interviewed by the Anglican Church News Agency. And uh, during the interview, Archbishop Moon Hing said this. He said, I have so enjoyed being here at Anglicans Ablaze. And um, I have really uh, been inspired. I love what you guys are doing. But you shouldn't be keeping this to yourselves. You need to be sharing this with the rest of the Anglican world. And I sent some of you a clip indicating, um, you know, uh, uh, um, that little clip was the interview. 
and you can see for yourself um, uh, Bishop Mooning speaking about sharing with the rest of the Anglican world. And last year, we had a very successful online conference. Uh, for those who don't know, we had an average of 8,228 people attend each session, an average of 8,228 people per session. That's an enormous amount. The in-person conference we were planning for, uh, we were only planning for 2,500 people. We had over 8,000 people join us. And then Bruce uh, Woolley said to me halfway through the conference, he said, Trevor, there are so many people. Why don't we, we park? We park the conference on YouTube and we ask these 8,000 plus people to invite family, friends, neighbors, and especially their church people to attend the conference on YouTube. Do you know that from towards the end of September last year to the middle of December, over 100,000 additional people attended the conference on YouTube. Remembering what Archbishop Moon Hing said and being amazed by how many people came just from AXA and there were a few internationals who joined. The Lord laid it on our hearts to invite, invite the rest of the Anglican world. Now, it just so happens that um, there is a task team for discipleship. I used to serve on that team. I served for six years and then I step down, they recycle us. I step down, Bishop Martin stepped up and he is the AXA rep um, on that uh, uh, task team, that international task team. And Bishop Moon Hing is the chair. So Bishop Martin and I uh, had a Zoom meeting with uh, 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 Bishop Moon Hing. And we said, do you remember what you said? Well, we think it's now possible to take Anglicans ablaze to the rest of the Anglican world. And he was delighted. He was excited. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, this must happen. But we need to speak to all the reps from the other regions. And all of them responded by doing this. They said, we are in count us as part of the Anglicans Ablaze International Conference. And it's going to be truly international because, for example, Bishop Moon Hing will take a whole session. He won't just be a speaker. They're going to do the worship. They're going to um, do the speaking, uh, interviews, uh, testimonies, um, whatever. They will take responsibility for a whole session. And so we're going to be having regions, for example, from Malaysia. It could be from the UK. It could be from Latin America. Uh, it will certainly be from Africa. We will have different regions coming and sharing Anglicans ablaze with us. It will be truly and fully international. And we are excited. We are extremely excited and we are making preparations for this. Now, this is important. Imagine if you don't tell your people and they discover afterwards that there was this Anglicans Ablaze conference, the rest of the world attended and they didn't know and they were not able to attend because they didn't know. Because in the dioceses, the word wasn't spread around. So please, we want to um, have the word spread in all of our dioceses. All of our people need to know about it. All need to have the opportunity to say, I want to attend that or not. So this is really important that we let our people know. Um, Archbishop uh, Tabo 
has always been supportive of Anglicans ablaze. And he is excited. Uh, Bishop Martin and I will be speaking to him um, as we move into the, um, the, the preparation phase. Um, a number of things have already been done. Um, and we will send you all the information. I don't want to bore you with information now. So four things. Transitioning GTC into our dioceses. You need to have an implementation team, beginning with a core team, to receive such ministry and to take over. We will still be there serving you, but you've got to take over. You've got to take hold of this in the diocese. We need to know what your needs are and how best we can serve you. And uh, we are beginning preparations for Anglicans Ablaze 2021. In fact, the, the preparations are already in process. But you need to begin now ready to let the word out and to say this is happening from the 6th to the 9th of October. 6th to 9th October. Please set those dates aside. And so, Bishop Sietzi, I will be stopping there. And there's opportunity now for people to respond. And you can talk about the transitioning process. You can talk about how the implementation team is made up. You can talk about needs. You can talk about how we can serve you and you can talk about Anglicans Ablaze 2021. I hand over to you, Bishop Sietzi, and Maybe, I think we can uh, open the floor. Thank you very much, Trevor, for that. I just want to really apologize for Ben Mandra, uh, who tried to get in and um, not, was not able to put down the mic and apologize for that. But I can see someone else, John Owambo, uh, who also doesn't have the mic on. I don't know if you can hear us. And especially welcome uh, Bishop Dean Tuelifunyan. And that uh, welcome. Welcome, Bishop Dean Tue. That, uh, and to John, uh, and to John. Welcome. Welcome, Dade. Thank you again for allowing your, one of your clergy to join the board of GTC. I hope that has been done with your blessings. And we appreciate, we appreciate, your, we appreciate your initiative in that regard. And also to, be, to show actively that you are part of growing the church by providing this clergy to be with us. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Bishop. Bishop Dindwe? Sorry, your line is not good. Uh, we'll take the opportunity later. Your line is Bishop. We'll give you opportunity later to respond. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Bishop, did you hear your line? Can you hear me, Bishop? Sorry? Okay, okay I'll just. Your line seems to be back. Can you hear me now, Bishop? No, I, can't, I can't hear you now. Now, I was just saying thank you for appreciating our small Anyana role that we are trying to. Uh, play within the GTC. We are happy to have one of our clergy uh, within the leadership of GTC. And uh, as a diocese, we pledge our prayers and support uh, within the G GTC. And they uh, will do everything that is within our reach and power uh, to continue to uh, uplift, to strengthen, and uh, give whatever we need to give in support of uh, this ministry. So we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank now, you. Will, thank you, Ndate. Thank you very much for those words. As uh, John Wambo, can you hear us? You need to unmute yourself uh, in order for us to hear you speak. Okay, maybe you can't hear us. Um, Brothers and sisters, I want to open the floor as Trevor has asked. 
um, to share um, or maybe to ask questions or make comments um, on, 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 on what Trevor has said. Um, and there, he said lots of things, but I'm sure you can pick whatever is closest to your heart or what you feel you need clarity on. The floor is yours. I'm to speak. I just want to make a comment, Bishop CHC. This document, uh, roles and responsibilities of the um, of the implementation team. Uh, this document has got everything in it. We have sent it to you. Um, the most important part are the bits in yellow, and then of course you can see from here onwards. Uh, that it's white. That's also important, but we really want you to focus on the yellow bits first. And it tells you everything you need to know about um, the core team, the implementation team, the vision, and so on. Any questions, any comments? Is everybody well, happy? See, everybody is muted. Um, well, let's take it that um, we shall wait a little for people to think through. Yeah, let me comment. Let me type it in the chat. Maybe people will respond by typing. Well, let me also encourage you to say that um, uh, has spoken about what is it that you, how we can help, what your needs are, and perhaps if you could, if you can, if you can't think about them through them now, I would encourage you to even explore to identify what needs are. There that the GC can help or can be part of. Remember that even though we are positioning GTC into the diocese, the, um, the AXA GTC will still hold the fort to be able uh, to be accessible to, her, to those who need um, further help in achieving the core and the implementation teams. And also training uh, in that regard. So if you have something, you think about something later, uh, feel free to write to uh, the office and to us in particular. Uh, we will pick up ways that we can help you in your specific uh, diocese. Is there anything else anyone can want wanting to ask? Bishop Tiet. Yes, uh, John. Um, and the team, thank you very much for the opportunity. I've been struggling. The network is not well. Even when you were speaking, I could just hear uh, here and there, but uh, there's a lot of uh, echo behind that I can't hear sorry. properly. I'm very sorry that I could not attend the last uh, uh, session because I've, I've uh, lost my brother-in-law to COVID. And uh, oh, it's Sorry. been a very, very difficult time. Uh, my sister can't uh, cope, but uh, we are trying. I can't cope easily as well. This is a man I was very close to. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's behind our backs. Uh, Matosani, we have a team in place. I communicated with the GTC office. And uh, yes, we've got quite a, a number of challenge when uh, it comes to the diocese itself, not, uh, uh, it, it, it becomes a financial kind of burden, but uh, I don't want to dwell much on that. I think uh, I had a very fruitful discussion with uh, uh, Bishop Stephen, and uh, we are going to embark on GTC uh, on a very wow, positive. That's good. 
Yeah, the team is very able team. Um, through the advice of GTC uh, uh, office, we have indeed included two young ladies and there is a young man, uh, then one archdeacon and uh, one other priest uh, together with myself. We would like to expand the team, but I think that would be uh, too much for now. I think let us do with what we have. And then we are putting a program in place. It's unfortunate our training was derailed uh, last year due to COVID because we had already coordinated a preacher's course uh, uh, through the Langman's uh, preaching wow, course. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. That one was accepted and uh, the bishop was very much thrilled to see it running. But most unfortunately, the very week that we had to embark on that program, that's when there was a full uh, lockdown. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, uh, we intend to contact the facilitators once more and uh, uh, so that we can pursue that matter. It's one product that is uh, thoroughly, uh, I mean, is needed. Uh, the both for priests and for uh, lay ministers and even the general um, con congregants, they really want it. And then uh, also on program, we would like uh, the Rooted in Jesus, especially for the uh, children and then for the adults. So I think without um, wanting to put too much on the plate, we will begin with those two. And uh, I think this is the right moment. But again, bear with us. You know that our province now has been, um, it is said it's one of the provinces that COVID is growing so fast. Uh, yeah. the are, uh, uh, it's, it's us, uh, Free State and Northern Cape. So I don't know where that will leave us, but uh, I don't want to sound negative. We will try and do our best to make sure that uh, we kickstart, especially on the Langman's uh, uh, preacher's course. We will not hesitate to give you a shout uh, if, 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 if there is a, you know, very serious uh, problems. But um, at a later stage in your planning, uh, especially Trevor, um, I think uh, we would very much welcome you to visit Matrosani sometime maybe around November, October, November, uh, depending on where we shall be with COVID. But otherwise, thank you very much for the support we get. And the last time it was the Bishop himself who attended on my behalf. And uh, uh, next time, I think you should be able to see quite a number of members of the uh, leading team of Matrosani on, um, on this platform. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you, John. Well, thank you very much uh, um, for for sharing. Um, I'm encouraged. Actually, Trevor was thinking while John was talking uh, that in our previous meetings we had um, uh, people like um, Saint Mark the Evangelist and uh, Natal and uh, Saldana Bay and so on sharing uh, what they are doing in their dioceses. Maybe we need to allow that sharing to happen. Uh, so that we know how many are already uh, facing the challenges and trying to overcome them. And uh, because we really wanting to see if there are other things that are happening within the dioceses. And uh, I, I know um, you'd know better as to how many dioceses are active out there. Bishop Dintue, uh, are, are you able to share perhaps briefly how it's happening in your diocese, because it's encouraging to us to hear. Can you hear me, Bishop Tieti? Now I can. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, I must say, uh, these kind of platforms are helpful enough uh, to empower people like us. You know, most of the time uh, we are all over the show and we are never 
really much closer to, or uh, we are not, if I may use the term or the phrase, uh, so much in the kitchen where uh, the cooking is happening. Uh, you just get reports from uh, coordinators or reports from uh, people who are doing the actual ministry. But so far, I must say, we have very dedicated people. We have uh, uh, Ashdikin uh, Hectorina. We have uh, Ashdikin uh, uh, Itumeleng, who is also our uh, diocesan administrator, who are really working very hard. I, 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 I'm not sure if I will do, be doing them any disservice uh, but uh, from the bishop's perspective, I think uh, with it, regards to the issue of uh, training, I think uh, that would help us a great deal, especially when it comes to uh, Sunday school uh, teachers, when it comes to uh, lay ministry, uh, when it comes to uh, issues of confirmation syllabuses, I think that would really, really uh, help us a great deal because in most cases you find that uh, uh, people are doing uh, courses or doing uh, training for candidates uh, on an individual or parochial uh, level. Uh, people just uh, bring together what, what they believe or what they think would be appropriate for a particular uh, group of people in terms of training. But uh, I want to believe, and I've always uh, indicated that it would be helpful that uh, as, as a province, we have a, a, a syllabus that will bring us together, unite us, uh, for instance, even though we use the Anglican prayer book, uh, we are not necessarily doing or following it uh, in, a, in a way that one could say restricts or brings uniformity, but yeah. it, brings uni it brings unity. Yeah. So I, I, I've always thought uh, Bishop Tietzi and Trevor that uh, a syllabus that would be focused, that would be uh, maybe have a, a particular uh, subject matter or theme on particular issues like now we are in COVID. Um, if something like uh, a theme on, on COVID uh, I, I heard Trevor earlier also speaking about gender-based violence. If you could have uh, themes uh, that would help really and empower uh, members of the church uh, on such issues. Uh, because sometimes we speak about these uh, issues. We speak about these uh, subject matters, but uh, we do not have a structured kind of uh, lead. We do not have a, a, one could say, an informed kind of uh, uh, lead or leadership uh, that can help members, ordinary members in the church, uh, how to handle this kind of subject matters. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm saying in the Diocese of the Free State, we are alive and active, but we'll do more with uh, guidance, with uh, training, uh, with uh, structured kind of uh, uh, themes or subject matters. I thank you, Bishop Tietje. Thank you very much, Bishop. I uh, really appreciate hearing that. And these are kinds of testimonies that we really would like to hear. And also they are encouraging because as we do the transitioning, of course, um, I think all of us would like to see the transition landing properly without uh, disturbing or without um, causing any uh, uncertainties uh, that will cause uh, the, the, the gospel. 
or that uh, you know you're still wanting the gospel to be accepted. Lenis, can I give you opportunity to speak um, before we wrap? Um, can you hear me, Bishop? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, Bishop. Um, well, 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 thanks for all this. I've, um, I've been listening and um, I've been trying to think now what would our um, diocese, what would, what would we need training on the most? And I actually perhaps, just my uh, opinion would be um, the Sunday school, the Sunday school. That's what um, I think what we need. And with COVID, I don't even think we've, our churches have been having Sunday school bishop so um i don't know i don't even know if the, the children have been coming to church i mean i haven't seen any at our church i'm not sure okay mm -hmm. thank you thank you uh, for that comment um in any case um i would like now to trevor unless there's something a comment that you wanted to make um, we need to try uh, to a close um is there anyone that i'm leaving out no <laughs> Yes, uh, um, just to say that, um, uh, Estelle, I uh, wonder if you can just uh, unmute and, yeah. Yes, Trevor. Okay. Uh, have, you, have you by any chance taken those notes? I'm just checking. Yes, I have. Okay, excellent. So, um, but um, Estelle's very good at this. I'm just wanting to make sure because... Um, Bishop Dintwe, Glynis, John, um, we don't want to miss what you've been saying. Yeah. But I also want to say this. If you can just send an email to Estelle, you've got her email address, and just say, these are the areas. Uh, I know, for example, that very soon, together with Bishop Martin, they're going to be launching a new uh, series of Rooted in Jesus trainings. And um, we've got people who work in the area of children and Sunday school who are chomping at the bit to, uh, to, to make an input, uh, etc. And so um, we want to just be sure, even if you send us three lines and you say, these are our needs. Um, but I know that Estelle, who's good at this, has also been taking notes. But we just want to make sure that we don't miss anything and that we uh, at least seek at some point to meet your needs. Uh, what we are trying to do is to, um, when we, for example, let's say um, we heard from Bishop Dintwe and from John that there are, are, are needs in the area of children, then uh, I think Glynis also said that, then we want to offer the training for all of you together. We can do it individually as well, depending on the situation. But, you know, uh, with the new technologies that we have, we can actually, um, uh, we can have, we can entertain a number of people attending uh, training courses and so on. But let's keep in touch. Uh, it is our privilege to serve you and we are here to serve. Please know that. Well, well, thank you very much. I don't want to keep you any longer. I want to uh, promise that one hour, even though we started a little bit late because people were struggling to, to, to tune in. But I think we have, uh, unless there is something and it's burning that you want to say, I would like um, to ask uh, Bishop Dintu to close with a word of prayer. Please unmute Bishop Dinter. Bishop Dinter, you need to unmute to please close with prayer. His connection might be playing up or they will. Let us pray. We pray in the name of God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Father, we give you thanks for this opportunity. We give you thanks that as the creator, 
you are calling us to be par partakers and co-creators in the world. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who saves us so that we too may continue to play the role of saving others through preaching the gospel of Christ. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, our advocate and helper, as we are also called to advocate on behalf of those who cannot, as we are called to help those who are unable to help themselves. Father, you have sent us out into the world to preach the good news. So through GTC and its leaders, we ask that you empower us, that you enfold us with your love, that you give us your wisdom, that you strengthen us, that you give us the commitment, that you give us the boldness to continue to preach the good news, to bring hope to the hopeless, to bring healing to those who are unwell, to bring wholeness to those who find that their lives are not whole, especially during this time of COVID. And so Lord, on this Africa day, we pray for the entire continent of Africa that we may come to know Jesus Christ and come to be his friends and befriend one another in the name of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you everybody. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. you. Estelle, Trevor, Bye -bye. Thank you. Uh, Bruce, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank